All right, guys, I'm here to, uh, I guess, just talk to you a little bit about something I've noticed lately. Um, this is mostly directed at the super beginners, uh, beginning cubers. Um, I've noticed a lot lately that there are a lot of beginners. Now, we're talking people that average a minute and 40, you know, and up. Um, maybe, maybe a little less, uh, whatever. Uh, people that just started a week ago or a month ago, you guys are, I, I've noticed a lot of yous are rushing, trying to, trying to move too fast. Um, a lot of yous are buying goo hungs, trying to use goo hungs, you know, um, and a lot of yous want to learn Friedrich right away, and, and, and um, I'm going to tell you that it's going to hurt your times a lot more than help them uh, in the end, because what's going to happen is you're going to have this great cube and you're going to know a faster, slightly faster method and you're not even going to have the experience behind you. So the Friedrich method is not really going to help you that much at all at, at that point in, you know, your skill, whatever. Um, the Friedrich method is going to get you maybe 10 seconds off your time, maybe 20. Uh, so what's going to happen is you're going to go from averaging a minute and 40 on the beginner's method to averaging about a minute and 20. And it's not really going to help you very much because you're just not, you don't understand enough about how the cube works yet and enough about cubing in general. Your, your finger tricks aren't up to par yet. Um, you're trying to control such an advanced cube uh, that are, you know, a lot of advanced cubers have trouble controlling guhungs. Um, they're not easy to control for beginners. You know, you got to get used to your store-boughts first. This is my store-bought, and I'm going to tell you, it's a lot like a DIY. It cuts corners pretty well. You know, that's almost 45 right there. Um, it's super fast. You know, you can get your store-bought like this, you know, not too hard. I only lubed this. I didn't sand anything. And the best thing you can do is to practice with this instead of these advanced cubes. Because uh, then you build your times down. Build down. I know, that's weird. Uh, you, you get your times down lowered enough uh, to where you're doing well. Uh, get, get sub a minute before you go trying to learn Friedrich. Um, you know, use your store-bought cubes. Don't worry about DIYs, because all these cubers, all these super advanced uh, uh, sub-10 cubers out there, Harris Chin, um, uh, Eric Acker's Dyke, and all these guys, they, they, you know, you knock a Jimmy, they, they all started with crappy cubes. When, when they started, they didn't have Guhongs and the A5s and all these cubes. They didn't have cubes like that. They had store-boughts, and then they had Type A or Type C, you know, which were pretty much store-boughts with springs. Um, so they got really good with these crappy-ass cubes. Um, and that's why they're so good now with these great cubes like the Guhong and the A5 and the F2, you know. Uh, because they got good first. So if you give them a store-bought cube, they're going to still get sub-10 because they're that good. You're not that good. So the, the Guhong is masking, uh, you know, your actual skill level. It's masking it because the cube is so good. It's allowing you to do things you wouldn't normally be able to do with a regular cube. Uh, so if you went to a store-bought, you're going to find out your times are not that good. So I really recommend just going slow and just really just use your store-bought. And if you have to use a DIY, use a crappy DIY. Now, I'm not saying use a cube that locks up a lot. I'm just saying use a type C. Use an old cube that, that'll allow you to actually build some skill. Um, <coughs> you know, instead of trying to rush through it. And as for learning Friedrich, wait until you're at least lower than a minute. 
you know, get your times down with beginner's method. It'll allow you to learn a little bit more about how the pieces move, um, how they work when you do certain algorithms. Um, and then when you learn Frederick, you'll understand a lot more and you'll be able to learn it a lot easier. When I learned Frederick, um, I, I was already doing beginner's method for, I don't know, two years at least. I, I, I didn't always have a cube though, so I, you know, didn't practice the entire time. But, um, you know, but when I learned Frederick, I was ready to learn it. I had, I was using my store-bought still. I didn't have a DIY cube. I got my first sub-20 time, and actually that's one of my videos on here down at the, the very bottom of the list. It's way back in the beginning. My 20-second or 19-second videos, those are done with the store-bought, and that was way before I had any kind of uh, DIY cube. So when you do learn Frederick, just start with F2L. Just learn the Frederick F2L. Get your cross down, uh, uh, build your cross on the bottom, get it down to under eight moves. Um, and I really recommend, now a lot of people will say I'm wrong and a lot of people will be against me for, for saying learn some F2L algorithms. Seriously, when I learned F2L, sorry, when I learned F2L, I learned all the algorithms. Now I'm not saying to go learn all the algorithms. I'm saying look at the cases. Look at look at the algorithms. The algorithms really will help you understand what you're doing. Um, a lot of people say, nah, you know, make up your own way to put them in. Uh, learn it intuitively, whatever. Um, and yeah, that I, you know that that can help you. But learning the algorithms will allow you to do the cases, and at the same time you'll learn what's going on because you'll see how you're doing it when you're doing the algs. Um, it'll really help you understand a lot more about how the, the pairs work and how to, you know, how to place them and whatnot. And then when you're ready and when you've mastered the algorithms and when you've mastered every angle, you've got to do your F12 cases from every angle. And there's a site I'll link you to that will uh, you know, it gives you algs for every F2L case from every angle. So it'll say the main alg for the for the way it is in the picture, and then underneath the main alg, it'll have uh, an algorithm for that starts with Y or Y prime or Y two, and that's if you encounter the F2L case from that angle, from that Y two position. So you know how to do it from that position. And then after you master all this, after you know every case so well, blah, 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 whatever, you're able to start changing, changing the algorithms around a little bit to your own way of doing them. And you'll know, you'll know what you're trying to do uh, rather than just going into it and just trying to come up with ways to do it. I wouldn't know. I, back then, I thought you had to know F2L algorithms. I didn't know there, there were other ways to do it. You know, I didn't really think about it. Um, <clears throat> but now I've come up with my own ways of doing them and I don't use those old algorithms anymore but they really helped me get into F2L it really helped me learn the process of what you're doing and now I can do any F2L case from any angle and I know faster ways of doing them um, then once you've mastered F2L then move on to you know just when you first learn F2L, stay with your beginner's method last layer. Then, when you've mastered F2L and you're ready to move on to Friedrich last layer, you know, you can do your two look OLL. And I never learned to look anything. Um, when I learned last layer, I learned last layer. I sat there for months, several months of torture and wanting to kill myself because it took so long and it took a lot of patience and time and I, I really can't emphasize enough how much time you really need to put into it. Um, I just sat there and learned all the OLLs and all the PLLs and I'm glad I did uh, because now my last layer is awesome. <coughs> but um, 
I really recommend not worrying so much about OLL and just learn to look OLL. So all you have to do is make the cross on top and then you'll you'll have a choice of seven different algorithms to you know you, that you'll have to do um, and then I really recommend just learning full PLL don't learn to look PLL because what's gonna happen is that the PLL algorithms are long enough as they are uh, you don't want to have to do two so they're easy to learn they're easy to recognize once you learn what you're doing um, just learn all the PLLs. There's not that many, uh, you know, and like I said, they're easy to learn. You know, the PLL algorithms are very, just, uh, it's just, there, there's, there are very easy ways to memorize them. Um, so learn all the PLLs. And then when you're done with all that, then you can sit there and work on your OLLs for the rest of your life. And your OLL, you know, when you're done with that, then you're, you're done. And then, you know, then you should have enough experience and skill to where you can start messing with guhongs. And you'll be, you know, you'll be pretty good. And then your times will really, you know, you'll show a difference. Uh, you'll jump from 40 seconds to, to down into the 20s. You know, you'll, you'll get better uh, instead of starting a week ago and saying, hmm, I want to learn, you know, I want to do all this crap and, and get goo hung and I'm going to be fast. It's not going to work that well. It's really not going to help you at all to rush into it like that. I really can't say this enough. Um, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you a little bit about how things work. So I can already see how this is going to work. I don't even I didn't even look at the cube yet and I can already tell what I'm gonna be doing. Now look out for things like this. Pairs. You want your F2L pairs to you wanna to try to save them. I'm not gonna be able to save this, I don't think. Well actually, yeah, I think I can save that pair. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is once you know your color scheme well enough, you're gonna know that red's here, uh, greens to the right, blues to the left, etc. Alright, so I see my red piece here, I see the green up here, the blues here, and the orange is here. Alright, and the way I would handle this cross would be to, I would first put this green in, and now the pear is still here, see it's still there, and now I'm going to put this blue in, and when I put the blue in it's going to knock orange back. So I'm going to put the blue in, and my orange is in the back. I know it's there, ready to just put down. See? And now, when I put, before I put the red down, I'm going to move this pair out of the way so I can use it. So that's my first pair right there. And just right in front of me here just popped up another pair. So I'm going to use that too. So right away. And this is how I would do this. Now, this is one of the algorithms I learned for F2L. And this is a really good situation. I would come and I would come bring it up like this, bring it back into the slot, and come back. And now I see what's going to happen here is this pair is going to break in the back, but it won't be any you know worry to me to just come over here and put it right in, right? And then now I see these two pieces, the blue and orange pieces. So I would know that I can easily come back here just solve that pair and I already see the next pair the blue and reds back here right so and I don't even have this is an algorithm I don't even have to move the cube because I know this algorithm for this this case Let's just come back and it's gonna solve right in the back there see that's why I suggest learning algorithms so I hope you learned a little bit of something from this um, if you're one of my subscribers, I'm sure you, you already know all this, uh, you don't, this won't really do anything for you. Um, but hopefully some beginners out there will, uh, will learn a little something and maybe get a little smart about how they're going about doing cube solves. So that's it, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs>